What's up, my people? Today we are concluding our Deceased Complete Story series with the entire War of the Undead Gods 8-issue miniseries. Deceased is undoubtedly one of the greatest complete alternate universe stories to come out of DC in a very long time. And it's been a blast to go through it all over again, so let's not waste any time and jump right in with Deceased War of the Undead Gods Issue 1. Issue 1 starts off in the past on Krypton, specifically the city of Kandor, as we see Kara L, aka Supergirl, being rushed to a rocket ship by her parents to get to safety as Kandor is currently being attacked by Brainiac and Krypton will blow up soon after. She tells her parents, I don't want to leave you, but her dad says, and we don't want you to leave us either, Kara, but this is all that's left. Her mom then says, knowing you're safe, we can face what's to come. We could face Brainiac. He will take Kandor, and Krypton will be gone soon after. Her mother then hugs her saying, but we do not end here. You carry the best parts of us within you. Live for us, Kara. Live for all of us. We then see her rocket away from Krypton as it blows up with captions from her parents continuing to say, it will take many years for you to reach your new home daughter, but you will sleep on your voyage. Krypton will be long gone. To you, it will seem like no time has passed. We have searched throughout the universe and we found a planet. When you reach this world, you will have incredible abilities. But you will not be alone in this. There will be others on this world with fantastic powers. You will be special, but not apart. As we see our land on this new world approaching the civilization, saying, hello. Captions from our parents continue to say, we are sending you to New Genesis. jor would send his son to live with the primitive. We are sending you to live with gods, malevolent gods devoted to peace. This is not just survival, this is more. This is how we show our love for you, Kara. This future is the greatest gift we could give you. Which, as we see, is extremely ironic considering New Genesis has been infected by the anti-life equation, with zombie versions of the new gods attacking Kara as soon as she lands, inevitably catching her, infecting her with the anti-life equation as she screams in pain. The issue then gives us a brief recap of the heroes and villains lost over the five years that have passed since the anti-life equation infected Earth. But then came the cure, curing such heroes as Green Arrow, who was previously infected. We are then brought back to the new DC Trinity consisting of John Kent's Superman, Damian Wayne Batman, and Wonder Girl. We see Damian tell John, I could come with you. He replies, it's space, Damian. Damian then tells him, I'm Batman. With John saying, I'm going to the center of the sun. Damian says once more, I'm Batman, which is hilarious. Long story short, we find out that the strongest heroes still left are on a mission to the sun to retrieve Superman and inject them with the cure who's been feeding on the heart of the sun for five long years. So John Kent goes to retrieve his father so they can cure him, while Cassandra Kane, who now possesses the power of Shazam, Cyborg, Green Canary, Wonder Girl, and Mary Marvel stand watch as backup. John is able to lure his dad out, at which point Green Canary uses the greatest weapon in the universe to hold the unloving Man of Steel. But he shattered it like glass, at which point all the heroes work together to restrain him as Cyborg injects him with the cure. We are then taken to Earth 2, where all the heroes of Earth 1 have made their new home after the anti-life equation ravaged their Earth. We see Jon Stewart and Guy Gardner Green Lantern talking to Lois, the president of Earth 2, as a boom tube opens up, with Jon Stewart panicking, saying, we're under attack, all Lanterns and the Justice League members, report. But they see it's their friends and fellow members of the Justice League, as Damian Wayne Batman, John Kent Superman, and Cyborg start walking out. With Damian saying, it's just us. And well, as Clark Kent Superman walks out greeting his wife Lois Lane, saying, Madam President. He's even got a new cybernetic arm as Wonder Woman chopped off his arm when he was infected. Lois breaks down in tears running to him, saying, Smallville? As Superman's father, Jonathan Kent also walks out, having been cured, hugging his son Clark and reuniting with his wife Martha. After Mr. Miracle and Big Barter bring the heroes here to reunite, Mr. Miracle says, well, it's time we return to New Genesis. Jacob has waited long enough. I don't know when we'll be back. And for those of you curious, Jacob is Mr. Miracle and Big Barda's son. And with that, they boom to back to New Genesis. Meanwhile, Alfred walks away saddened after seeing families reunite, saying, excuse me. Damien then walks over to him, saying, you couldn't have known. And Alfred tells him, Master Grayson, Tim, Bruce. Damien then says, even Bruce didn't know. You did what you had to at the time. Alfred replies with tears in his eyes, do not try to absolve me of this. They could have been saved. I pulled the trigger three times. I killed my sons. This is actually extremely sad and gut-wrenching, as Alfred is saddened and pissed at himself for shooting Grayson, Tim, and Bruce. Killing them because if he didn't kill them and somehow was able to restrain them somewhere, they could have used the cure on all three of them and cured them. Anyway, the next day we see Brainiac's probes approach Earth 2, and before Jessica Cruz's ring could even finish sounding the alarm, John and Clark were already engaging. And by the time the rest of Earth 2's Green Lanterns arrived, the Superman had already torn the probes to pieces. We then see Guy Gardner say, seriously, you didn't want to save any for us? Jessica then speaks up and says, Guy, his probe saw us. He won't be far behind. Brainiac will be coming. And she was right. Brainiac's ship arrived hours later. Clark and John go inside to check it out, only to see that Brainiac no longer is a threat, as he's missing his legs and his right arm. We then see a devastated Brainiac hanging there, saying, We have to stop them. The gods are dead. But still they come, Kal-El. They will poison the universe. The dead gods will end everything. But let's pause for a sec. If you love DC and gaming, I gotta tell you about today's sponsor, Simon, and their dope 
dope new board game, DC Super Heroes United. If Simon rings a bell, it should. They're a huge board game company that's brought us hit games like Deceased, a zombie side game. And an awesome aspect is that these games are all crowdfunded. So you get to participate in making the magic happen and get special exclusive perks. In their newest game, DC Super Heroes United, the greatest heroes in the DC universe unite to fight off our favorite villains master plans in this fast paced, family friendly cooperative game with amazing figures. This game is perfect for one to four players where each player controls one DC superhero. But don't let these awesome miniatures distract you. This game has simple rules, easy setup and quick playtime, but you got to bring that A game with some strategy if you want to defeat the villain before he accomplishes his master plan. DC Superheroes United is coming soon to GameFound and by backing the game on GameFound, you can obtain exclusive playable heroes and villains which won't be available at retail later on. So follow the campaign to get notified at launch and get an exclusive Two-Face coin gift along with your pledge. And let's be honest, any Batman fan needs that coin. Just visit cmon.co forward slash variant and sign up to get notified or just click the link in the description to be part of the fun. Now at the beginning of Deceased War of the Undead Gods issue 2, we see Mr. Miracle and Big Barda returning to their home world of New Genesis, like they said they were in issue 1. And they're both extremely nervous to see their son Jacob after not seeing him for 5 years. The comic says the two gods stepped through a boom tube, ready to see their son again in paradise. But the home of the new gods was paradise no more. The celestial city had fallen, their home, gone family, friends, but Barda only had one thought in that moment, Jacob, where is he, as she screams with tears. Barda then sees a black and red boom tube that opens and starts to go through it, but Scott aka Mr. Miracle tells her, wait, we have no idea what's happened to that boom tube, or where it leads. She says Jacob could be through that. I'm going in, Scott, but a voice then says, stop you cannot. As we see the Black Racer, the God of Death, tackle her away from the portal, as she looks at her hand which has now been reduced to a skeleton. Black Racer says, she is a god, she will heal. Scott then asks, what is that? What the hell happened here, Black Racer? He answers, Dark Side. Scott says, Dark Side is dead. Black Racer tells him, yes, unliving Dark Side struck. All that weren't killed are now agents of the anti-life. The mother boxes have been infected with the anti-life virus just as the new gods have been. And now only the dead or unliving can pass through the doom tubes. Barda asks, where do the doom tubes lead? Where is unliving Darkseid? As the next page shows us that Darkseid is attacking the homeworld of Sinestro, which was the home to 7 billion people. His homeworld then sends out a distress call saying, we are under attack, the entire planet, we're dying. Sinestro and his Yellow Lantern Corps get the distress call and of course he heads there to save his planet. As Sinestro says, I will not let my planet die. As captions in the comics say, a threat to us all turned enemies into allies. It made for some very unlikely partnerships, as we're brought back to Earth where Brainiac is trying to convince Superman, Batman, Guy Gardner, and Lois Lane that he wants to work with them to defeat the undead gods. Even offered him the bottled city of Kandor, the last surviving city of Krypton, saying, I understand your hesitation and distrust. I offer you this as a show of good faith. Batman asks, and why are you willing to give this up, Brainiac? He replies, I collect knowledge. If the universe dies, knowledge dies with it. As Superman holding the city of Kandor, staring at it, says, we are facing the end of all life. I will do anything to stop that from happening. I will do whatever I can to protect the spark in this universe. Brainiac then says, with every wasted word we speak here, the anti-life spreads and more life slips into darkness. The odds of you saving existence, and Superman finishes his sentence saying, are irrelevant. We will reach out to every ally we have in the universe. We will fight back, basically reluctantly agreeing to work with them. Meanwhile, Sinestro and his core attack Darkseid with a caption saying, they targeted every unliving god on the planet and unleashed. But their blast never hit the planet as we see Kyle Rayner and his wife Sornik Natu who is also a Green Lantern and Sinestro's daughter, stopped their blasts thinking they were attacking his home world. And as they're arguing with Sinestro, the comic says, and then came something neither Green Lantern nor Yellow Lantern could possibly have foreseen, a Kryptonian. As we see an infected Supergirl knock out Kyle Rayner while flying past him and using a mother box to infect Warworld with the anti-life killing several Yellow Lanterns in the process. At this point, Darkseid comes up to join the battle with Sinestro telling his daughter, don't hold back, use everything. We have to destroy him. But Supergirl comes flying in yet again, disrupting their attack, at which point Darkseid grabs Sinestro by the head and rips it off after Sinestro screams to his daughter, run. Please, I need you to live, daughter, please so you could free my home world. But wait, it gets better. With Sinestro dead, his ring starts looking for a new wielder and it finds it in Darkseid, flying to him saying, you have the ability to instill great fear. At which point Darkseid puts it on saying, everything fears the end of life. Becoming an unliving Yellow Lantern Darkseid with Supergirl right next to him. Issue three starts off two months in the past on the planet Ran, 25 trillion miles from Earth. Captions tell us that Ran and Thanagar had been at war
war for generations and that the Thanagarian soldiers were disciplined, well-trained, ruthless, and attacked from the sky. They would have taken the planet years ago if not for Rand's protector, a man from Earth named Adam Strange. Strange had been brought to Rand by a Zeta Beam. He fought for his adopted world, and he fought for his family, as we see him fighting off the Thanagarian soldiers, saving his son and wife. As he hugs his son after saving him, a caption says, the problem was that the Zeta Beam that moved him between worlds was not under his control, and tended to wear off at the worst times. As he starts to fade away back to Earth, leaving his wife and son unprotected, while under attack by the soldiers of Thanagar, he gets teleported back to Gotham, where he says, computer, find date and place for the next scheduled Zeta Beam. As he flies over Gotham, he sees Wonder Woman, a fellow hero, so he screams, Diana. But when she comes for him, he realizes something's wrong with her as she's been infected. She then proceeds to slash at his chest, infecting him too. The comic then jumps to two weeks later on Ran, where we see it's been taken over by the Thanagarian soldiers, and Strange's wife and child are being held captive. But all of a sudden, one of the soldiers gets shot, and his wife and son see it's Strange, but a zombie version of him, as he proceeds to go after and kill them as his son screams, Dad. As the caption says, Adam Strange returns to his family, and the threat spreads further across the universe, as he clearly infected his family and then the Thanagarian soldiers. We are then brought to the Rylix system days later, where someone is recruiting soldiers, saying, Greetings, the entire universe is in peril. I am looking for fearless, noble warriors. This is perhaps the greatest cause of all time. Someone holding a martini asks, What does it pay? The man replies, I am looking for someone noble. You clearly do not fit that description. Then everyone behind this man is like, Oh crap, what did this guy just say? Basically scared for this man. As on the next page, we see it's Lobo who grabs him by the collar, asking, How would you describe the main man, you weedy little bastard? That's right, Lobo has finally entered the deceased continuity. As he's holding this man by the collar, infected Thanagarian soldiers come crashing in, killing and infecting everyone in the bar. Lobo says, What the frag? and then grabs one of them by the neck, saying, The guy you just killed poured my drinks. The soldier slashes Lobo across the chest, but to his shock, it does nothing. Lobo doesn't get infected, he doesn't turn. The soldier even says, You do not turn. Lobo replies, Oh, I can turn, as he twists the guy's head off of his shoulders. How crazy is that? Lobo is unaffected by the virus. That's definitely coming into play again. Anyway, he then steals the soldier's wings to fly up to their ship that's releasing all the soldiers and says, frag you, while flying right through it, destroying it. Yup, Lobo soloed the entire Thanagarian army. The man who is recruiting noble soldiers then stands up in the fire and wreckage saying, you are a great warrior, to which Lobo responds, no crap, do you want Lobo to save the universe? Let's talk turkey. Okay, so back at Themyscira, we see a funeral being held for Diana, aka Wonder Woman. We also see Ares, the god of war, attend the funeral, but he assures the Amazons that he is not there to ruin the funeral. He is simply there to warn Green Arrow, Green Canary, and the other heroes that are there that a war is coming that cannot be won. The final war. It will be glorious, but ultimately futile. I will stay to watch the end, but every race in the universe will die. They ask, how can you be so certain of our failure? He tells them, because this has all happened before. This is how the entire universe was infected. As he shows Green Arrow in a book. Green Arrow says, okay, but this is a historical record, right? So how did we beat it last time? Ares answers, we did it. This is a record from a universe that was lost. At this point, Green Canary's lantern ring goes off saying, this is a priority alert for all Green Lanterns. Ares says, it begins. The Guardians of the Universe start telling all the Green Lanterns, all Green Lantern Corps are to return to Oa for a briefing immediately. Gather any and all allies. This is a universal threat. As Guy Gardner says to Batman and Superman, road trip? The Guardians continue to say the anti-life virus is spreading across the stars. Green Arrow then says, is that the threat? We've got this. We found a cure. We've already fought and won against the anti-life equation. Ares says, you're not fighting an equation. Darkseid, he's a new god. He's a child, a powerful pawn for something much larger. He had no idea what he was playing with when he merged the anti-life with death. What he has unleashed, what has turned its gaze towards us. This is no equation. This is older than numbers, older than gods. This universe will die. Erebos is here. Now this is a brand new character for the DC universe, but in Greek mythology, Erebos is the personification of darkness and one of the primordial deities. Needless to say, this entity is going to be a massive threat when it shows up. But this brings us to issue four, where we see a flashback of Alfred being forced to kill Nightwing, Tim Drake, and Bruce as they were infected. He then falls to his knees saying, my boys. But Bruce opens his eyes asking, why? Then Tim stands up saying, why did you kill us? With Nightwing saying, we didn't have to die, father. But we then see it's a nightmare as Leslie Thompson wakes Alfred up from bed. We find out that Alfred and Leslie Thompson are now dating, which is kind of awesome. And Leslie being a doctor tells Alfred, as your girlfriend and your doctor, I'm telling you, you need to find a way to forgive yourself or that anger will consume you. As Alfred deeply blames himself for not being able to save his boys. There's a knock on the door and when they open it, they see it's Damien. Damien says he's surprised to see Leslie still there. She tries to make up an excuse to why she's still there, but he just says, living without 
Alfred by the looks of it. I mean, you could try to make up a lie, but, and she finishes the sentence saying, you are the greatest detective on Earth. And I assume that carries over to this Earth too, as they're all living on Earth too now. We learn that Damien is there to say goodbye to Alfred as he and several other heroes have a meeting with the Guardians on Oa, planning on how to fight the anti-life virus. Alfred begs for Damien not to go, saying he's lost too many sons, but Damien says the anti-life virus is spreading across the universe, Alfred. Nowhere is safe. We have to stop this. I have to stop this. Alfred then says there's too much of your father in you with Damien replying, thank you. Alfred tells him, I wanna stand with you, find me a way. Damien asks, how could I? Alfred tells him, a weapon, a power ring. I want to fight. I don't want to sit uselessly on the sides. John Ken arrives to tell Damien, we have to go. But Damien puts on his cowl, telling Alfred, you have never sat uselessly on the sidelines, Alfred. Nothing our family has achieved would be possible without you. Do you want to battle undead gods with me? Alfred answers, I do. At which point Damien says, there's too much of my father in you too. With Alfred telling him, thank you. John, Damien, Superman, and several other heroes then head to Oa for their meeting with the Guardians. Meanwhile, we see the planet Almorak has also been invaded by the anti-life virus, which turned new Genesis gods known as the Forever People. Yellow Lantern and Darkseid even shows up along with Supergirl and several other new gods to wreck shop. Back on Oa, the Guardians tell the heroes that have gathered, the threat is growing. If the virus isn't dealt with, if the spread isn't halted now, the anti-life equation will be beyond containment. 12 planets have already been destroyed. Over 100 billion lives have been lost. Another seven planets, with species clearly seen as assets by the anti-life equation have been infected. We are sanctioning a lethal force. These infected worlds must be wiped away. But obviously our heroes, specifically Superman, aren't down with that as Superman tells the Guardians, I will not allow you to destroy entire worlds, Ganthet. He replies, you would stand against us, Kryptonian? At which point Cassandra Kane, Mary Marvel, and several of the heroes say he will not be alone. At this point, the Guardians try to trap Superman in a Green Lantern construct bubble, but Superman just punches Ganthet in the face through the construct, knocking him to the floor. With Guy Gardner saying, one punch. He knocked out a freaking guard Guardian with one punch, which is a callback to the time Batman one-punched Guy Gardner all the way back in the Justice League International title, and I love it. Anyway, several of the heroes then start fighting the Green Lanterns before Damien realizes that Ares is there and he's the one who's kind of instigating this war as that's what he does. With Damien looking at Ares telling his fellow heroes, we're not in control of the situation. He then points to Ares saying, you're manipulating us, God of War. He responds, I just gave you a little nudge. Damien says, stop this. A voice then says, you should listen to the little Batman, Ares. I won't let you hurt Superman. As we see it's Mixia Spitlick, with the caption saying a fifth dimensional imp in a bowler hat. It seemed ludicrous, but it was the beginning of the end as the comic comes to a close. Dude, I can't believe Mixia Spitlick has entered the building because that dude is incredibly powerful. Also, issue three revealed that Lobo cannot be infected. So it looks like Lobo and Mixia Spitlick are gonna be key players in the mission to save the universe from the anti-life equation. Issue five opens up on Earth two where Black Racer, Big Barda, and Mr. Miracle boom tube in. Lois Lane says, Scott, Barda, Bada responds, we'll have our son soon, Lois. Where is everyone? Where is Superman? We are then brought to Oa where we pick up where we left off last issue with Mixia Spitlick and Ares, a reality warping being facing a god of war. You see, Mixia Spitlick didn't like that Ares was manipulating heroes, specifically Superman, as he's the only one who's allowed to mess with Superman. So now he's at odds with Ares. Ares says, you think you can command me, Imp? He replies, I think I can do a lot more than just command you. We see even the guardians of the universe are too scared to step in between both cosmic powered beings. But the Kryptonian Superman and his son do not hesitate to break the two up. Superman then tells the Guardians we will be taking the cure to the infected planets. If the Green Lantern Corps wants to stand besides undead gods against us, then so be it. Your opposition will not stop us from saving worlds from the anti-life equation. Green Canary then says Darkseid has allowed something to leech into this universe, something called Erebos. With Wonder Girl adding, it's not just an equation. One of the Guardians then says, Erebos? Superman asks, you know this name? The Guardian replies, we do. We thought we were dealing with a virus. If Erebos is at the heart of this, then it changes everything. The core cannot be used to wipe away infected planets. All Green Lanterns are to stand on Oa. The central power battery must be protected at all costs. Damian Wayne Batman says, Guardians, you monitor the universe. Can you show us where the spread is? Show us what the front lines look like. The Guardian says, the front lines? The front lines are everywhere. The new guy and the other space-bearing species have spread the virus across galaxies, as they show that Kilowog's planet is the one that the Undead Armada are currently striking. Jon Stewart puts his hand on Kilowog's shoulder saying, I'm sorry, as Kilowog leaves to help his planet. The Guardian says, if Erebos is at the heart of this, we must call a meeting of the Quintessence. No Green Lantern is to face the anti-living before the Quintessence has spoken, telling Guy Gardner his duty is here. It's at this point Mixia Spitlick says, it's okay, Superman, I'll handle Darkseid. It'll be a great team up. Ares says, you think you can defeat Darkseid? Mixia Spitlick replies, sure. I mean, I won't really need to fight him. 
I'll probably just turn him into a tasteful flower arrangement. Because remember, people sleep on Mixia Spitlick. Dude can literally alter reality. At this point, Superman's son John says, I'm coming with you. But Soup says, no, I need you to stay here and protect Ma, Pa, and Lois, as well as all of Earth too. You're the only one I trust. At this point, Superman, Mixia Spitlick, and Kilowog set off to stop Darkseid and his army from destroying Kilowog's planet. But when they arrive, they see it's not just the three of them. Nope, John Stewart and the rest of the Green Lantern Corps followed, saying, you're not alone, Kilowog. The heroes then go down to the planet and start fighting the undead. But an infected Supergirl knocks Superman to the ground, allowing the undead Yellow Lantern Darkseid to hit him with his yellow Omega Beams. At this point, Mixia Spitlick intervenes, saying, okay, that's enough of that, new god. What should I turn you into? Houseplant? persuasive essay, but Mixia Spitlick got too cocky as the caption says, all Mixia Spitlick had to do was think and Darkseid would have been done, but he didn't have time to think. As Darkseid just shows him a mother box corrupted with the anti-life equation, instantly infecting Mixia Spitlick just by looking at it. Captions then continue to say, Mixia Spitlick was no doubt confident that he couldn't be harmed, but he could still see it. And all it took was a corrupted mother box to show him the equation for a creature many considered to be a joke to become the greatest threat in the anti-life equation army. See what I'm saying the comic straight up told us that now that Mixia Spitlick has been infected, he's the greatest threat in the anti-life equation army. Hell, even before he got infected, if he wouldn't have looked at the damn mother box that was infected with the anti-life equation, he could have just turned Darkseid into flowers, like he said. Again, people like to think of Mixia Spitlick as a joke, but there's a reason why he's such a great threat to Superman and pretty much everyone else in the DC universe. Guy can alter reality with a thought, he's a fifth dimensional imp. He's the definition of great things come in small packages. At this point, Mixia Spitlick makes himself huge and starts starts wrecking shop, destroying Kilowog's planet. The Green Lanterns try to stop him as Jon Stewart and Kilowog get up close and personal. But this allows Mixia Spitlick to catch them in his hand. They quickly put a Green Lantern force field around them, but it doesn't matter. Mixia Spitlick is way too powerful for them as he literally crushes them inside of their Green Lantern force field bubble with Jon saying to Kilowog, you're my friend in brightest day, and Blackest Night, before they're crushed like blueberries. After this, Mixia Spitlick decides to finish the job and flies right through Kilowog's planet, destroying it, flying all the way to Oa, destroying the Green Lantern's central power battery. And with it, every Green Lantern was severed from their power. It also exposed the Green Lantern core to gravity and the vacuum of space. But before the Green Lanterns could suffocate and die in space, the Spectre, the Wrath of the Presence, the God of DC Universe says, I have to intervene. So he flies to Oa and restores the central power battery for the Green Lanterns, saving them and squaring off against Miss yet Spitlick, saying, I am the spirit of vengeance, and I am very, very pissed off. And with that, issue 5 ends, so let's jump into issue 6. Issue 6 starts off with Lobo being persuaded by an alien race to save the entire universe, as we learned in previous issues that he can't be infected by the anti-life equation. Lobo asks, what's in it for the main man? They tell him, it's your universe too, Lobo. If it's destroyed, you will be as well. Lobo replies, maybe. How much are you willing to pay? They say, whatever you want will be yours. Lobo then uses some choice words, and they tell him, in return for the universe's survival will provide a hundred years of hedonism and excess. Lobo says, I don't know, could get boring. They then say, we'll ensure it does not get boring. Our greatest minds will turn their vast intellect to an onslaught of creative scenarios for your personal gratification. I don't know if you guys are catching on, but the scientists are gonna be turning their greatest intellects to certain pleasurable scenarios for Lobo, at which point he's like, Fine. He then adds, I'll save the stupid universe as he rides off on his space chopper, saying, time to hunt the dead. Elsewhere, we see Superman and Kyle Rayner mourn the loss of their friends and fellow heroes, Jon Stewart and Kilowog. We are then brought back to the fight between Spectre and Mix Yet Spitlick. As captions of the book basically say, their battle and power was so great, it was tearing reality apart around them. Black holes were punched in space, planets, Stars were sucked into oblivion. That's right, this is a battle like none other. The book straight up says they're punching black holes in space. Planets, stars were being sucked into oblivion. What even is that? You have the wrath of God versus a fifth dimensional imp, a true battle of titans. We then see the Green Lantern Corps try to tip the scales as they throw restraints around Mixia Spitlick's arm, but the book tells us all of those brave warriors able to overcome great fear to face a fifth dimensional horror were like gnats. As we see, Mixia Spitlick crushed them in his hand like gnats. Meanwhile, on Earth 2, we see the undead army arrive invading, trying to infect the planet. At which point, John Kent, Green Canary, Cyborg, and the rest of the heroes get to work to fight them off. But in the ensuing battle, Leslie Tompkins, Alfred's now girlfriend, is infected by Adam Strange. Captions then tell us what transpired that day may have begun decades earlier, but the catalyst was Leslie Tompkins. Now, if you weren't aware, these narrations are actually Alfred, so Alfred is straight up telling us, though his loss has started decades earlier, Leslie's death was the straw 
that broke the camel's back. We are then brought back to the fight between Spectre and Mixia Spitlick, and Mixia Spitlick tells Vengeance, it's time for your end. But Superman being Superman comes flying in, punching the imp right across the face, giving Spectre the opening he needed to stab Mixia Spitlick right through the stomach. Killing him with the caption saying, the Spectre used that opening created by Superman to strike the fatal blow. Spectre then says, if you could hear me in there, you will not win, Erebos. The heart of the universe will keep beating. But he just says no, as Mixia Spitlick reaches his hand into Spectre's chest and pulls out Jim Corrigan, tearing the host from Wrath. Killing Corrigan in the process, at which point the Wrath of the Presence was untethered and drifted away. Yeah, man, it seems like just when you think the heroes are gonna win, something worse happens. Meanwhile, on Earth 2, the heroes are getting their butts handed to them. But Damian Wayne, not wanting to give up, uses smoke bombs to punch the unliving High Father straight across the face. But he just retaliates and punches Damien so hard, the sound of the hit is sickening to others. At this point, Alfred snaps and stands up to High Father of the New Gods. As a caption of him says, I didn't even realize I moved. All I knew was there was a scream. A scream I contained when that little boy lost his parents in an alley so long ago. The scream I held in as I ended the lives of three men I loved. A scream of defiance, of grief, but mostly of fury. And in that moment, I heard an echo of my anger across the cosmos. There was a harmony of rage. And in the middle of that scream, a bloody Damien gets up saying, Alfred? And on the final page of the issue, we see Alfred has become the new spirit of vengeance with him saying, this is the spirit of vengeance and the rage of a man. You will not take another son from me. As he ends a god, punching High Father right through the head, killing him. And with that, the issue ends. Issue 7 then opens up with the uninfected heroes having their last stand against the anti-living on Earth 2. We even see Lobo finally enter the mix, putting his metal hook right through an infected light ray. Elsewhere on Earth 2, we see Big Barda and Mr. Miracle fighting off an infected Adam Strange. But Mr. Miracle is distracted, saying, Barda, stop, as they see their son Jacob, who is now also infected. Mr. Miracle's hesitation costs him his life, as his son Jacob jumps on him, putting his fist right through his father's chest. Elsewhere, we see Alfred, who again is now Spectre, has just killed the infected High Father. He did this because High Father was going to kill Damian Wayne in the last issue. As High Father falls to the ground, Alfred says, It's all right, Damian, you're safe. Damian just looks at him with a bloody face and says, No. I'm not, as we realize Damien has been infected by High Father. Damien says, grabbing his head, I can feel it in my head. I can't stop it. Cassie Wonder Woman then comes over saying, Damien, he tells her, I'm so sorry, Cassie. I tried, but it's not too late. Alfred, Cassie asks, Alfred, that's you. He replies, no. And yes. As Damien says to Alfred, I know you're gonna want to tear them apart, Alfred. You want to destroy, but you have the power to save. As Damien screams out in pain, clawing his face, slowly becoming one of the anti-living. Alfred narrates, seeing the loss of our loved ones could have defeated us. Instead, our hero's resolve grew. They fought harder. I think Erebos could sense it, since the heroes of Earth 2 were life's greatest hope, because in that moment, the anti-living received reinforcements. As we see a doom tube open up with the anti-living dark side yellow lantern, Supergirl, and freaking war world. Spectre or Alfred says, as he looks at the reinforcements arrive, every part of me wanted to fight, to punish, to decimate everything anti-life had infected, because he is now the wrath of God. Alfred continues to say, but Damien's last words were correct. You have the power to save. So Alfred tells Cassie Wonder Woman, keep them at bay as best you can until I return. She's all like, return? Where are you going? We need you. He says, no, there's somewhere else I need to be, as he flies off world. Meanwhile, with the reinforcements on Earth 2, things are looking worse worse than ever. So John Kent Superman goes to try to hold off Yellow Lantern Darkseid. To his surprise, he's being helped by Brainiac, who says, hold him, Kryptonian, with Alfred narrating, saying, perhaps the ninth level intellect calculated a chance, a possibility that almighty Darkseid could be overcome if Brainiac works side by side with the powerful son of his nemesis. But there are some eventualities that no intelligence could predict. As Darkseid is able to grab hold of Brainiac and infect him by touching his head. The comic tells us that as Brainiac's operating system was taken over by the anti-life equation, he did not attack the heroes, nor did he attack Earth 2. His focus was elsewhere. Brainiac had destroyed hundreds of planets, but with each planet he ended, he abducted and shrank a city and its people to preserve the knowledge of that world. Erebos had him return to the ship to spread death and destroy all of the stolen cities. Every city would have fallen if not for Cyborg. Cyborg comes in to stop him from destroying all the captured cities on Brainiac's ship, and then tells Brainiac, or more specifically, Erebos, we know your name. We know what you are. If you can hear me, Erebos, the cities are under my protection. 
the infected Brainiac then tries to hack Cyborg by piercing his chest with one of his tentacles. But Cyborg says, I can feel you lurking, testing my firewall. And all I could say is, that is a very bad move. Because now I know you can't control me. You can't infect me. But I can infect Brainiac. I can control him. I can take his technology, his knowledge. Brainiac is mine now. As Cyborg takes over Brainiac, essentially becoming the new Brainiac. Now let's pause for a second, because Cyborg becoming Brainiac is an insane hybrid. Cyborg is already one of the most dangerous characters considering he can hack into all human and alien tech. Then you give him the power of Brainiac, a ninth level intelligence? That's just crazy. This instantly makes Cyborg one of the most threatening characters in DC this version of him at least. But we return to the story to find John Kent fighting Darkseid as we see him fleeing, he tells Green Canary and Mary Marvel, keep fighting. As a Shazam possessed Cass Kane kicks Darkseid in the face, hoping to hold him off. We see that John Kent only fled the fight because he sensed an energy blast from Warworld that was going to destroy Earth 2. He puts himself in front of it, stopping and deflecting it. But as his bruised and broken body falls back to Earth 2 after successfully stopping the blast, we see 1,000 Kryptonians rise to fight the anti-living. We learn that Cyborg, who is now Brainiac, freed the bottled city of Kandor, giving our heroes an army of Kryptonians to combat the anti-living. We also see Alfred return back to Earth 2 and see that he left to go retrieve the cure for the anti-living that was made by Earth's heroes earlier in the deceased storyline. So of course they healed Damien and several other Earth's heroes and even villains, as they took a vote and voted to cure and save Darkseid, a decision of course Superman was for. Once cured, Darkseid finds out that he was made a pawn, he says, my vengeance will be terrible, as the issue ends. And this brings us to the eighth and final issue. We see that with a cure brought to Earth by Alfred Pennyworth Spectre, that it was a time for unlikely reunions. We see a cure Jacob reunite with Big Barda, his mother, who he thought to be dead, and his father, Mr. Miracle. We also see Supergirl reunite with her parents as she finds out that Cyborg, with the power of Brainiac, is the one who freed them. After we get some nice reunions, we see Damien approaching death, aka Black Racer, saying, I want to ask you something. Racer says, I do not sense your approach, Damien Wayne. Few can surprise death, speaking to the stealth abilities of Damien as he was able to sneak up on the new god of death. Black Racer then asks, what do you want from me? Damien says, my father and my brothers taught me to respect all life. Before I was Batman, before I was Robin, I was an assassin. I was raised to look for weaknesses. I've been thinking about how to take this fight to the source. Erebos is a primordial deity. It is the personification of darkness. The only thing that can destroy the dark is light. Erebos is anti-life and I have an idea. I want you to tell me if it'll work. I want you to confirm that I can end this being. After talking with Black Racer, Damien goes to Cyborg saying, I've been talking to death. He replies, that's quite a sentence. Damien says, I ran something by him. He thinks it could work. Erebos is the source of anti-life. And I think the answer to stopping him is in you. As he holds up a USB drive, Cyborg asks, what is that? Damien and Cyborg then gather all the heroes and villains telling them, thank you all for coming. We believe we could take on the source of all of this. We believe we could take this fight to Erebos. As they say, there's a problem. Erebos exists in limbo, outside of our universe. We need to travel through a doom tube to reach him. The problem is you need to be dead to travel through a doom tube. But we learn that Cyborg and Damien are working on a solution to that problem. Cyborg says, once we can get into limbo, Batman and I believe we have a weapon that can end Erebos. But to ensure the deity doesn't escape, we will need to be inside the bean when we unleash it. Meanwhile, they're going to need several powerful heroes to create a crack big enough for several heroes and war world to fit inside. Before their mission, John Kent Superman gives Damien a brand new white bat suit saying, I thought the personification of Dark could come up against the light tonight. You don't have to wear it if, but Damien holds it up saying, no, this feels right. Thanks. We then see the solution that Cyborg came up with to get the heroes through the Doom Tube is to create a machine that will stop their hearts for one minute, temporarily killing them, allowing them to pass through a Doom Tube and into Limbo. Once activated, they're all electrocuted and temporarily killed, allowing them and War World to pass into Limbo, where Black Racer says, we're here. We have reached Erebos as we see him for the first time in the series. And man, does he look terrifying and huge. He's like a Kraken Cthulhu hybrid thing. Ares and Black Racer then distract Erebos while several other heroes like Superman, John Kent, Mary Marvel, Green Canary, Yellow Lantern, and Darkseid blast him with the power of Shazam, the heat vision of two Kryptonians, the Omega Beams of Darkseid, and Green Lantern's light. Lobo then goes in with his hook and space bike to hold open the crack they just made as Cyborg and Damian Wayne Batman drive world right through it. Once inside, Cyborg says, okay, it's time to unleash the weapon. Wait, I don't know what it is. The weapon. 
It's like it's been removed. Damien, what have you done to me? He replies, I'm sorry, Bruce was a paranoid man and you were bonded to apocalyptic technology. He didn't just hide a tracker on you, he hacked your entire system years ago and he left control with me. I had a theory, the anti-life virus leapt out of your mind. I needed the opposite and I found it in you. I found the life equation. I extracted it and I erased it all from your system. Now it only exists in me. A cyborg and the readers realized that Damien's whole plan was a suicide mission. He extracted the life equation from cyborg and put it in himself and is now going to detonate it from inside Erebos to kill him from the inside out. He stole it from Cyborg because he knew Cyborg or any of the other heroes would not agree to this. With full control of Cyborg, Damien then programs him on a flight path out of Erebos. When Cyborg tells the other heroes what Damien's real plan is, they are obviously devastated and mad at the same time, except for Darkseid who says, tell the child, this is most impressive. As Damien waits to go off like a giant light bomb that will create a new universe, Alfred aka Spectre asks John Kent, Damien's best friend, if he'd like to be with him in his final moments. As Spectre is fast enough to get them out in time. Of course John agrees and once inside Damien says, you can't save me John. John replies, I get that. I just thought I'd sit here so you're not alone. Damien says, if I told you what I was doing you would have never let me go through with it. John says, no I wouldn't. You were a great Batman. As tears fall from John's eyes, Damien begins to explode with Spectre able to get John out of there in time. We then see Erebos explode from the inside out as Alfred says, I lost my last son. Damian Wayne was born an assassin. He was taught to kill. He was taught not to care for life, but he fought everything he was taught and he saved all life. As we see Damien's closest friends and even love interest Cassie Wonder Woman mourn when Cyborg and John give them the news. Spectre flies through the cosmos saying, I visit sometimes the cosmos Damien made. I glide past its new suns and I walk over its cooling planets. I had no idea how much a parent could sacrifice for a child. Not until I had my own did I understand what I would give up for them, what I would do if any harm came to them, how deeply I could miss them, my bats my sons, my whole universe. As Alfred looks up at the cosmos Damien made that is in the shape of a bat symbol as the deceased series comes to an end. Guys, this has been a hell of a ride. The series started in 2019 and every single spin-off series in this deceased universe has been absolutely amazing. And what an ending. Talk about character development and coming full circle for Damien Wayne, a kid who was taught to be an assassin, taught to kill, and in the end makes the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life for the universe, showing us and John that he was a fantastic Batman. Tom Taylor, that's how you wrap up an awesome story with Alfred looking at the cosmos that is in the shape of a bat saying, my bats, my sons, my whole universe. Now it's your turn. Let us know what your thoughts are on the deceased series and which of the miniseries was your favorite down in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you next time when we talk about all things comics.